It's Feedback Gaming. Welcome back to another multiplayer analysis. Yep. So the last video did really well, so I thought I'd go over a few other things. This is going to be a slightly shorter video than the last one. I gave kind of an overview of the overall game. I'm not going to do that this time. I'm just going to go over the areas that were lacking. Therefore, we can make improvements and go forward from there. We first of all are going to start with England. By the way, this is the overall map of the end game. by the way. The Axis did win. They did win it and they beat back the Soviets in Barbarossa. And pretty much controlled all of Asia, Africa. Well, most of Africa and uh, Europe as well. Aside from the UK and West and South Africa. And that's pretty much it. Yep, great. So, first of all, we're going to look at England. First of all, the UK lacked planes massively. Absolutely, devastatingly lacked planes. Uh, they were fighting a war against the Hungarians, who I was playing as. I rushed uh, Fighter 3, so I had some huge amount of agility that I was fighting them with. And overall, every time I was fighting them, which you can probably see here, as you can see, for every one plane that I lose, they lose 11. So, in all fairness, we have a massive tech lead, and their plane numbers are absolutely devastating. We did do a para drop onto the UK, and it wasn't successful. Uh, it needed to be followed up with some uh, ground troops, as well as maybe a few bombers, too. It was just fighters and paratroopers, that's all it was. So, it wasn't successful. It did happen a few years back, but it was okay, and it could have been improved upon. Now, the reason is, why didn't the UK player have many players? One, he's not currently he's using it. He's not using the air production continuous focus. 20% reduction is massive. He also does not have a fighter command, so in that case, he can't get the most latest, latest up-to-date fighters. He's only got fighter twos. He should have fighter threes, and uh, he's not gone for the most powerful national focus of England, which is aircraft production group, which reduces the cost of fighters by 10%, which is massive. There you go, fighter two. He also could have improved the fighters by giving them a better engine as well, giving them more agility, therefore more ability to fight in the air, and also better guns would have gone a long way as well, but he didn't do that. So, in all fairness, he lacks planes, and he also lacks the technological edge of the latest fighter plane, and he also doesn't have the agility. And as an extra final bonus, he's not been spending his political power as well. So, he could have gone for the light aircraft guy to get more agility on his fighters, making his planes have the extra edge, therefore to defeat the Germans and the Hungarian planes over England. Yep. Um, he's also missing the air doctrines too. So you can also go for the Air Doctrines and go for Fighter Initiative to get the extra agility. There's also one here. There you go. Multi-altitude multi fighting plus 10% agility too. So that would have also gave him an extra edge in the air technological war against the Axis aircraft. Uh, and that's pretty much it really. This is the issues with the UK player. Overall, his Navy is pretty impressive. And his land forces aren't too bad either. Um, the, the composition of his land force is a little bit confusing now. He's gone for field hospitals, even though he's on service by requirement. I guess at some point he may have lost quite a lot of troops, maybe, I'm not sure. And he's playing more defensive the time being. With the political power he's got, he could have gone for more production teams and military staff, but he's 1942, so that should have been done a long, long, long time ago. Anyway, that's the thoughts of the UK player. We're going to look at the USA player now. Um, he invaded Mexico to get more space to expand. He's focused on Navy to a massive degree, which I don't really understand why, because his Navy is massive to begin with. He has got a stacky of a 317 ships, nine carriers, and for some reason he's still pumping out loads of more ships and also producing more naval dockyards. So, I mean, this is something you would do if you've lost your fleet and you want to build it back up again. And I'm just a little bit confused why he's gone ahead with that. I'm not sure. Yet again, definitely focus on Navy. Fighting lots of battles here, which is good, but yet again, not capturing any islands. He hasn't gone for Marines either, which is a very confusing to do as the USA needs those Marines. No medium tanks too. You, you've got the production edge as USA, so you need to get that production edge in the amount of breakthrough and the army you've got, which he doesn't have. Doesn't have a tank template either. He has this one, but it's not being used. There you go. Don't ask me why. No idea. He's using a lot of anti-tank too, but he's not researched the anti-tank techs. So right now the anti-tank ability, his piercing's ability is very, very low. He could potentially have 100 piercing at least. But the division he's currently got at the moment only has a total of 31 with the support anti-tank. Yet again, if you want to get the most out of your piercing, you need to get make sure you research them as well. Uh, he's got a lot of mixing here of his submarines with his big fleet, which doesn't really give you any advantage for the submarines as such. In all fairness, it's not really worthwhile. The submarines should be split off and doing com convoy raiding around the uh, the oceans, which he's not doing. Uh, adding, adding them onto the big fleet doesn't really give you an advantage. I like the fact he's researched all the doctrines, but he's gone for the research operations, but yet he's not 
got anything to him. So what he's done is he's researched the submarine buffs, but he's not really using the sum submarines up independently, so they're not really giving much of an edge. His plane production is pathetic as well. Um, strangely enough, his production's actually a little bit lopsided. He's, I mean, he's making enough planes for close air support, which is really good, but strangely he's not using them. Um, I'll take it back, actually. No, I'll retract what I just said. His plane production is decent. Um, he's just kind of lopsided the production. Uh, like, you're making really old interwar bombers here. Um, you're making lots of naval bombers, lots of close air support. Making quite a lot of carrier-based planes as well. Like, for instance, this should be reduced all the way down to here. Because, look, you don't need this many planes. Just producing one or two factories on naval bombers and carrier fighters is enough. So these could be better assigned to air cobras, for instance. Uh, he has got a lot of planes also in wings already. Um, the question I'm going to ask myself is why aren't these fighters currently helping out the UK here, they should be on air bases here helping out the UK, but strangely enough they're just sitting here on the east coast doing absolutely nothing, which is kind of confusing. Apparently the UK player did tell him that he was having trouble against the Axis uh, Air Force, but he guess he wasn't reacting to that as such. But anyway, that's the US player anyway. Um, okay, let's move on to the Soviet Union as well. So the Soviet Union had some massive issues. He had a lot of... Uh, a lot of divisions, which is really, really good. I like, I appreciate that. Almost 500 divisions, that's really good. Um, but yet again, he's not really spread his fleet out correctly. Uh, he's our army out. He could be defending the East Coast as well. Uh, the Eastern Front, but he's not. Also not defending here very efficiently as well. He got landed on by Sweden in Leningrad and getting pushed out from here. Um, he's... Guns are massively behind, in all fairness. with He is doing pretty good with his production because he's got lots of rows, but he should be switching out to the lesser guns at this point because he can produce way more of them. Um, is that when the production efficiency goes up, we're able to catch up, so that'll be okay. He's not gone for medium tanks either. He's producing a lot of light tanks. Uh, he hasn't got many planes. Actually, take that back. No, he has a lot of planes, but the planes are not being micromanaged very well. He has got an air wing here that's over capacity, so he's not getting any he's not getting any efficiency out of this air wing, even though it's a big 100 plane air wing. So he has the tools for this playthrough to actually be kind of effective, but I don't know, at the moment he's, he's spreading out of his divisions is really, really bad, and he's allowing himself to get snaked, which is not really helping him out. So no medium tanks. Uh, he's also really behind on his encryption and encryption as well. So that would have gave him an extra edge for detecting and countering the enemy's builds as such. I have no problem with his division as such. I guess he could have gone for the full uh, 20 combat width. Actually, that is the 20 combat width because he's got the uh, mass assault doctrine. So that makes sense. So that's okay, actually. I was thinking about it. Sitting on his political power again. 722 political power. Could have gone for air safety. Uh, could have gone for capital ships. Uh, could have gone for total mobilization. Uh, could have gone for the air wing guy. There's lots of things he could have researched there that he has not gone for. There's also... Is he going for captain of industry as well? He's not producing. Oh, he's repairing of his roads here, I see. Fair enough, there you go. That is the Soviet player. The Hungarian players who I played as. Uh, there was a few issues I did run into. I was helping by the air. Uh, my air force was pretty much the best in the entire game. I ended the game with something like 7,000, 8,000 fighters. I rushed fighter 3. I rushed fighter 3. And I made a variant of the Fighter 3 that was really, really insane. So you can see here's my Fighter 3. You can see him 555. Five, five. That is an insane Fighter 3 Mark IV. It has been lend leased out to a few countries as well. It was so insanely good. I was also working on self-propelled artillery. I made a total of 700 of those, but I didn't get a chance to use them. My, my troops were mainly for defensive purposes. I was going to add on the self-propelled artillery, but I was lacking army experience, so I never got a chance to do that. What I should have done is I should have gone for the military theorists as early as possible, so therefore I could have took advantage of those self-propelled artillery infantry builds and used them in the battlefield. Otherwise, there would have been a bit of a waste of time sitting there. Yet again, I ain't got any extra political power, but I've managed to research everything that I needed to get me the most out of what I was using. Uh, but that's the only thing I could have gone wrong on, really. I just made sure that I could have made my uh, more desirable self-propelled artillery. Move that onto motorized as well. And done something probably roughly... Oops, shit, no. Something like... I don't know, something like this maybe, 22 combat width, lots of self-propelled artillery. So that is a very, very soft attack intensive build 
That would have worked out really effectively on the Eastern Front. Again, I didn't get a chance to do that. I was mainly micro in my planes all around the world. These smaller wings are in on interception, hitting the uh, people who are bombing me. And then we've got these bigger wings here, which are on air superiority. And you can see they're having a devastating impact here. Look at the amount of planes that I'm losing. And look at the amount of planes they're losing. It's just crazy difference because their level of agility is maxed out. As you can see, I've gone for the agility guy. And I've also maxed out the plane. And I've also, to top that off as well, gone for air fighter initiative. So the planes are doing some rock solid damage. The German player played exceptionally well. There's only a few things that yeah, I would have caught him out on that could have done a little bit better. Uh, for instance, he's he's been holding back. He's making a lot of light tanks. There's nothing wrong with light tank builds. They're very, very fast. Speed of 12 kilometers per hour. But he could have had a lot more heavier tanks at this point as well. After the Battle of France, he only had, he had less than 24 armor divisions. He could have had a lot more at this point. Not too bad. Yet again, I just mind one of my personal preferences. I would have gone a little bit heavier on the armor as such. Armor as such. Um, he had a little bit of an issue with uh, some of his supplies as well. He could have communicated with his Axis players and asked for things that he needed. So he could have asked for support equipment. He could have asked for motorized. He could have asked for infantry equipment. And he could have phased out his light tanks to focus on the strength of his existing light tank divisions and keep move more on to medium tanks which would have been more worthwhile in the long run very strangely he's not finished his doctrines i don't understand why he's not done that he should have gone for uh camper frappen and as well as modern blitzkrieg to make his tank divisions have lots and lots of breakthrough finally arch there's two extra players the japanese player played really well again he was the last guy who played in the lap previous game he's having a bit of trouble with guns i think it's probably because he went through loads of extra of these tank builds at the end of the game which is probably nothing against him it's just something he did really late in the game um not really much to say about the japanese player the divisions are really really great as he usually are he's got this 40 whipped here with lots of soft attack he's got the marines with lots of bite he's gone for the super super heavy soft attack marine build to attack the islands he's gone for the massive defensive artillery mountaineer build and you've just got the same build here these are the same aren't they no, they're a bit different. This is similar, though, to this one. Yeah, there you go. And finally, the real star of this game would be the Italian player who has gone for a infantry soft attack mainly. Mountaineer defensive build. A few uh, cavalry, I guess that's for suppression. Got the Marines for heavy soft attack too. But the glorious armor of this, 98 armor. Look at all these heavy tanks and motorized. And he's also got a signal coming for the initiative as well. Insane. He's only managed to make three of these because they are insanely, insanely expensive. But here you go, boys. Look at these beautiful heavy tank divisions. So beautiful. So impressive. Oh, he's even got some of my Hungarian heavy tanks as well. Apart from that, guys, I hope you enjoy these videos. I, if we do do a multiplayer game in future, I will give an analysis of mistakes and possible flaws and whatnot. If you guys want to tell me of any critique that I could give for these videos or anything that I may have told you that might not be 100% accurate, feel free to fire at me. Apart from that, guys, hope you have an awesome day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.